So yeah, the Dendro Archon is finally here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to build Nahida as an off-field slash off-field sub-DPS slash support, maybe even main DPS. And yeah, let's begin. Alright, so as always, I'm going to start with explaining her talents and roles. I'm going to explain how does she work very quick. I did a video before about her talents, so if you want to check it out in details, you can. But right now, I'm just going to give you the quick version. So her auto attacks are just going to be like normal auto attacks. They're going to be applying Dendro, and they're going to have like normal scale. Um, it's kind of medium they're not nothing like crazy and obviously they're gonna scale with attack for elemental skill you can hold it or tap it um either way you can just scan enemies and like mark them when you mark them you're gonna leave like a thing on them it's like child's riptide almost and then that mark when you hit it it's gonna hit the enemies with damage and you only need to hit one of them to hit all of the marks enemies so if you have like eight marks and you hit one of them all of the eights are gonna take damage and also there's a cooldown between each hit initially it's 2.5 seconds so that mark can only hit enemies every 2.5 seconds but with your elemental burst you can decrease this cooldown and this damage is gonna scale off of your attack plus elemental mastery it's mainly gonna scale off of your elemental mastery but it's gonna scale off of your attack too now for her elemental burst, um, it's basically just going to buff your elemental skill. And that's going to happen based around how many characters and elements you have on your team. So for each element, you can have two stacks. Um, if you have one pyro on your team, it's going to increase the damage from your elemental skill. If you have two pyros, it's going to increase your damage even more. If you have three, it's not going to matter. Um, the maximum is two. If you have one electro, it's going to decrease that cooldown that I talked about before. And if you have two electros, it's going to decrease it even more. And hydro, if you have one hydro, is going to increase the duration of your elemental burst and with two hydros it's going to increase that duration even more your elemental burst is not really going to deal any damage or anything like that it's just basically going to buff your elemental skill and also buff your party members from the passives talking about the passives or first passives that's going to give the character on the field 25 percent elemental mastery from the character with the highest elemental mastery on your team so whoever is the character that has the highest elemental mastery on your team is going to be given 25 percent of his elemental mastery to the character on the field with a maximum of 250 so that's going to cap out at a thousand elemental mastery i think that's pretty simple it's just elemental mastery from the highest elemental mastery character on your team and finally her a4 passive um is going to give you damage bonus and crit rate bonus to your elemental skill from your elemental mastery so every point of elemental mastery you have above 200 you're going to gain 0.1 damage bonus and 0.03 crit rate that's only going to buff your elemental skill you can have a maximum of 80 percent damage bonus and 24% crit rate that's also going to cap out at a thousand elemental mastery for Nahida so if you have above a thousand you're not going to benefit really from it so yeah her a4 passive is just going to buff your elemental skill from your elemental mastery now moving on to her roles um Nahida's main role generally is a dendro applicator slash support and also she's going to be dealing damage a lot of damage so yeah she's kind of like a sub dps or like main driver on your team that's going to be applying dendro and also helping the rest of your teammates with elemental mastery that's pretty much it she's She's probably gonna be the best dendro applicator in the game right now now moving on to her talent priorities um it depends how you'd want to play her if you want to play her on field obviously you'd want to upgrade your auto attacks and your elemental skill you'd want to keep them around the same level because obviously your auto attacks are going to be very important you're going to be auto attacking on the field but your elemental skill is going to be very important too even if you're playing her on field it's still going to be very important and then you want to upgrade your elemental burst if you're playing her off field um you'd want to upgrade your elemental skill first and then upgrade your your elemental burst you don't really need auto attack if you're playing her off field obviously keep in mind you'd want to keep them kind of close your elemental burst is going to help you too so you don't want to like leave it completely behind but now moving on to her constellations should you wail on her or should you not so her first constellation is just going to give you one extra buff to like one element on your team remember how i said before that she's going to have like two stacks for each element so right now if you have like say only one pyro on your team her c1 is just going to add in like one extra stack so even if you have like one pyro you're going to have the two pyros buff so it's going to make it easier to have like the full buffs from her elemental burst at the same time now would i say it's worth it i would say probably not it can be good on some teams but generally speaking i wouldn't really say it's worth it it's not bad but yeah but it's probably not something you'd want to like go for specifically so yeah, if you're going for c1 alone i would say it's not worth it so her c2 is basically going to give you two things they're going to allow your burning bloom hyper bloom and version damage to crit and that's very very huge it's going to give you way more damage when they crit from these reactions even though the crit rate is fixed at 20 percent and 100 percent crit damage but that's still going to be pretty good oh yeah and also they're only going to crit against enemies that are marked 
marked by um, Nida's skill. And the second thing is that when the enemies are affected by Quicken, Aggravate, or Spread, so basically all of the Electro Dendro reactions, their defense is going to be decreased by 30%. And that's also very, very huge. Um, the defense is going to be decreased, by the way. It's not going to be like ignored. So all of the party members on your team are going to benefit from this defense decrease. So it's basically going to increase all of your team's damage. Um, as you guys can see here, C2 is basically just more damage to your reactions and also some defense shred, which is pretty good. I would say it's a good constellation. It's definitely not necessary, but if you want to go for it, it's not bad. So yeah, I would say C2 is just good. C3 is going to increase level of your elemental skill. Wouldn't really say it's worth it. It's just basically more damage and that's it. Um, It's not bad, but you know, I wouldn't really say it's worth it. C4 is basically more elemental mastery. That's it. It's going to give you 160 elemental mastery or 100 if you don't hit like four enemies, but it's basically more elemental mastery. Um, I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, it's good. It's not bad. It's going to make it easier to build Nahida. You can rely on her C4 to get extra elemental mastery and then focus on other things when you're building Nahida. But also for C4, it's kind of expensive. It feels like C1, I would say yes, but for C4, it's kind of like meh. You can probably just manage to get enough elemental mastery on Nahida without her C4. So yeah, I would say C4 is probably not really worth it. C5 is going to increase level of your elemental burst. So it's just going to increase all of the buffs, Um, you know, decrease the cooldown even more, increase the duration of your elemental burst um increase your skills damage all of that it's good but for c5 it's definitely not worth it c6 is basically when you mark enemies and hit them with nahida's auto attacks they're gonna deal six extra very strong hits they're gonna hit with 200 of your attack and 400 of your elemental mastery which is very huge this is gonna be considered elemental skill damage and as i said they're gonna be six very huge hits that's gonna contribute a lot to her damage you're definitely gonna see a damage increase so it's definitely like a good c6 it's not a bad c6 but would i say it's worth it i don't know I'm, in my opinion probably not it's nothing like super crazy or anything like that but you're gonna see a damage increase so if you really like her and you want to go for a c6 then go for it if not then don't so for her constellations as a whole i would say if you want to invest in her a little bit go for c2 and stop there other than that probably not she's fine even at c0 so there's really no need all right, so now moving on to her weapon. I also did a tier list for her weapons um, way before where I explained all of the weapons on her in details and stuff like that. So if you want to check it out in details, you can, but you don't really have to because right now I'm just going to give you the weapons that you should use on Nahida. So starting off with off-field Nahida, for off-field, you're going to focus on getting elemental mastery from your weapon. That's going to be very important since her off-field damage is going to scale off mainly off of elemental mastery. So you definitely want to have enough elemental mastery from your weapon. And obviously getting some crit is going to be pretty get two crit rate or crit damage even though you're gonna be getting crit rate from your passive but that's not gonna be enough so any crit rate weapons and stuff like that they're gonna be fine too so yeah for off field weapons um a thousand floats and dreams is probably gonna be the best weapon obviously it's your signature weapon it's gonna give you a lot of elemental mastery and also damage bonus which is pretty good another weapon that's gonna be on par with your signature weapon is gonna be kagura's verity it's gonna give you crit damage which is pretty good obviously you're gonna need that and that's gonna increase your elemental skills damage and when you're playing Nahida off field that's her main source of damage so you're gonna need that that's gonna make the kagura as verity one of her top weapons too um the next best weapon is probably gonna be the sacrificial it's gonna be a very good weapon on her it's gonna give you a lot of elemental mastery which as i said you need and it's gonna allow you to reset your skills cooldown which in some cases might be pretty good but the main thing that you're gonna benefit from is gonna be the elemental mastery now if you have any of the three weapons before then use them the thousand floats in dreams kagura as verity or the sacrificial these are gonna be like the top weapons for Nahida. But if you don't have any of those, I would say just use the magic guide. It's going to be a very, very good weapon on Nahida too. It's going to give you a lot of elemental mastery and it's going to increase your damage. So it's basically elemental mastery and damage bonus. The only drawback that that weapon has is the low base attack, but for off-field Nahida, you wouldn't really care about that that much. So that's going to make this weapon very, very good. And obviously it's a three-star weapon. It's a free-to-play weapon. So everyone's going to have it. So if you don't have any of the other weapons, just use the magic guide. Obviously you'd want to make sure you have the passive active so make sure you have a hydro or electro on your team which obviously you're probably gonna have on a Nahida team but yeah there are many other weapons that you can use like four star weapons and stuff like that but i don't see any point the magic guide is just gonna be better and everyone have the magic guide so just use the magic guide if you don't have her top weapon 
Now moving on for on-field Nahida. So for on-field Nahida, it's pretty much the same really. You're gonna need elemental mastery, but since you're playing her on-field, you're gonna be auto-attacking, so you're gonna need attack, and obviously you're still gonna need crit rate and crit damage too. That's gonna change up your options a little bit. So her top weapons are still gonna be the Kagura's Verity and the Thousand Floats in Dreams. These are still gonna be her S-tier weapons for off-field or on-field. So yeah, if you have them, then use them on Nahida. Now you can also use the Solar Pearl, the Mappa Mirror, the Last Prayer, and the Wandering Even Star. These are kind of like her next tier weapons the solar pearl is probably gonna be the best in this tier so if you have it you should probably use it but the rest of the other weapons are gonna work fine too so you know if you have the last prayer map and mirror wander and even star they're gonna work pretty well on on field nahida now you have the rest of the five stars uh they're not gonna be as good but they're still gonna work too so you have the memory of dust the scoured atlas they're gonna work too and you have like the last tier weapons you can say so you have the black cliff is gonna give you crit damage um the wit set is gonna work too you know the usual like dps weapons um it's not really recommended to use those just use the map of mirror it's free but if you don't have it or you can't use it for any reason then you can use the black cliff or the wits so yeah that's pretty much it for her weapons she has a lot of options that she can use properly so i would say she's kind of free to play friendly in the weapons department Alright, so now moving on to her artifact sets. I also did a video before um, explaining all of her artifact sets, stats, and stuff like that. So if you want to check it out, obviously you can. But again, you don't have to because I'm just going to give you the conclusion right now. Before we continue though, please make sure to subscribe to the channel to see more upcoming videos. That's going to help me a lot and hopefully that's going to help you too. You're going to see like more guides and stuff like that. So yeah, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you. But for Naida's artifact sets, she have mainly two sets. You can use the four piece deep wood or the four piece gilded dreams which one is her best set the four piece deep wood is better on paper so it's technically going to give you more damage as like a single set for nahida's only damage the four piece deep wood is going to be the better set you're going to need that resistance shred and stuff like that which makes the four piece deep wood pretty good the gilded dreams is also going to be pretty close in damage but the main benefit from using the four piece gilded dreams is that it's going to give you a lot of elemental mastery and that's going to make it easier to build nahida nahida's going to need a lot of elemental mastery and it can be hard for some people to like um collect enough elemental mastery to build her you know you're gonna have to farm a lot of artifacts you use an em weapon stuff like that if you use the four piece guild of dreams it's gonna help you a lot with elemental mastery so even though it's gonna give you like kind of less damage overall it's still gonna help you a lot building nahida now this is for nahida alone the best option overall which is better than the four piece deep wood and better than the four piece guild of dreams is gonna be using them both at the same time how can you do that you should use the four piece deep wood on another character on your team and then use the four piece gilded dreams on nahida so the four piece gilded dreams is going to give you the damage bonus and then the other character with the four piece deep is going to decrease the enemy's resistance so that's going to be like the best combination and in my opinion that's probably what i'm going to recommend any like support or healer character on your team give them the four piece deep wood and then use the four piece gilded dreams on nahida but yeah fortunately they're both on the same domain so you're going to farm them both anyways just have the two sets farm that domain grind it and then um whatever set that you have ready go for it if you have them both ready as i said use the four piece deep wood on someone else and then use the guild dreams on naida and that's it so yeah that's it for her artifact sets now moving on to her artifact stats so starting off with the main stats for her sands you can go elemental mastery or attack generally speaking in 90 percent of the cases you'd want to go elemental mastery but if you're using nahida on field and you know you have enough elemental mastery you can go with attack to you know increase your auto attacks damage but generally elemental mastery is the go-to option on your goblet you can go dentro damage bonus or you can go elemental mastery so how are you going to decide if you're playing nahida on field you'd want to go dentro damage bonus and if you're playing her off field you should go elemental mastery the reason why is that when you're playing nahida off field um her elemental skill is going to be your main source of damage and her elemental skill is going to be buffed from your passive so you're going to have enough damage bonus from your passive alone you're not going to need to use a dendro damage bonus goblet so it's better off to have elemental mastery on your goblet but if you're playing her off field you're going to be using your auto attacks and your auto attacks are not going to benefit from the buffs from your passive in that case you're going to need dendro damage bonus so you're going to have to go with a dendro damage bonus goblet and finally Finally, for a circlet, you can go elemental mastery or crit. Um, again, it depends if you have enough elemental mastery, you should probably just go crit to maximize your damage. But if you don't and you're struggling with elemental mastery, elemental mastery is gonna be the main priority. So you can go elemental mastery on your circlet. For substats, um, you'd want to go crit, elemental mastery, attack, and energy recharge. You should probably focus on getting enough elemental mastery first, and then depending on your build, um, sure planer on field, you should probably get enough attack and then get enough crit and then energy recharge. 
energy recharge you don't really need a lot just a couple of sub stats and that's it now for the final stats you'd want to have on your naida the first stat you'd want to focus on getting is going to be elemental mastery um as i said before her elemental mastery you're going to technically need a thousand to have like the full buffs from naida but i would say just get around like 850 to 900 you're probably going to have other characters on your team that are going to buff your elemental mastery so you're going to reach a thousand that way you don't have to get like a full flat thousand only from your stats you know just get like nine or eight hundred and then the other characters are probably gonna give you buffs but you definitely don't want to go below 800 for naida this is like the main priority in building naida you'd want to have enough elemental mastery you're gonna need it for your own damage and also you're gonna need it for support um the next thing you'd want to get is obviously some crit i would say you should get as much as you can preferably obviously you'd want to get 50 to 70 percent crit rate and then 100 to 140 crit damage if you can but you know do your best if you're playing her on field you're gonna need crit even more so just make sure you focus a little bit more on crit rate if you're playing her on field you know just make sure you have enough elemental mastery and then focus on getting crit rate it shouldn't really be super hard you can probably get enough crit rate it's not gonna be impossible like nilo for example or something like that it's gonna be hard but not like super hard and finally energy recharge you'd want to have 110 to like 120 her burst is not gonna cost a lot of energy but you'd want to have a couple of substats to like make sure you have it on a good uptime so yeah you know just get like one or two rolls and that's it all right now finally moving on to our team comms so as i said before guys naida is gonna be like a dendro applicator and support so basically any team that's gonna need dendro naida is gonna be there now to give some examples you can play her in like a hyper bloom team so she can be like a dendro applicator and support for the team you can have like naida official and then a hydro applicator let's say shing show and then you can use Godzilla or sucrose or whatever that's gonna be a hyper bloom team and it's gonna work pretty well on naida obviously you can use her in a bloom team so you can use her as like a dendro applicator and support for the best bloom team on the game right now so you can go nilo naida kokomi and then another hydro let's say yellen or shingsho or whatever that's gonna be a very good team naida is probably gonna be the on-field driver for her team and you're gonna be dealing a lot of bloom damage but yeah um i mean you can use her in like a quicken slash aggravate team so let's say um double dendro let's say naida and then the dendro mc and then let's say beidou or yai miko for example and then let's say fischl or kuki that's gonna be a very good aggravate team for naida too but yeah as i said basically any team that needs a dendro naida is going to be usable so there are a lot of teams that you can play her in so yeah that was the video guys if you enjoyed it please don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you want to say anything leave it in the comments and see y'all in the next video peace